Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a teardown of this very large NEC Energy Solutions uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. Like a lot of the batteries I do teardowns of, this was purchased from the Battery Hookup website. It is advertised as 48A123-26650 uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And it's advertised as 364 watt hours of capacity. And Battery Hookup guarantees that there will be no dead cells in this pack. I've been watching these for a little while and I thought now is a good time to buy. Uh, they still have about 800 of them left, but they are going quickly. It is rated at 39.6 volts DC nominal voltage. It's got a maximum charge current at 4.5 amps at 46 volts DC. Part number itself is PSL010001. Um, I couldn't find much about this battery online. I did find one site though that mentioned it was from a Dell EMC VMAX storage controller. So I imagine this serves as a backup for like a large disc array or something like that. So to get this battery pack open, you'll need a T10 Torx. And you do need one with a longer shaft. Uh, if you got the little Torx bits like this, these will not work. And the reason being is there's one long bolt here. You need about two or three inches to go in. And there's two bolts on the side over here, the handle, that you have to go in quite a bit. Uh, so there is eight bolts on the top of this case. There is four across this side. And then there's three on this side in addition to the one in the middle over here. And then we'll have to remove the four bolts at the edge over here as well. And once you've got all those screws out, you should be able to lift the cover off. Yes, this one's still stuck a little bit. There we go. So here's what we got inside. We got the BMS board. We got one terminal comes up on the left and goes over. And then the terminal on the right comes up and there's a big copper bar that goes all the way across to the left as well. From this side, you can see these are almost like the traditional cell holders we're using to build our battery packs. Um, and then there's just some spot welded nickel strips in between. And it looks like every grouping of cells is soldered to the BMS, and that will be the lead that balances the individual groupings of cells. These are in a 4P configuration and 12S across. So that gives us the 48 cells. So in order to remove this battery back from this casing, there's a couple screws down in the center here. But I do need to mention though, as you're working on this, it's not like working on a 120 volt or 240 volt system, but you can still get a substantial shock uh, depending on the moisture of your skin and stuff like that. So just be careful where you're sticking tools. So there's six T10 Torx screws to remove. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And once you've got those six cells out, the battery pack should just fall right out. So on the other side, you'll see the thick bus bars that go across, and this is where the output terminals are. So these terminals here will be hot. You do not want to touch these terminals. So before we go any further, we'll just take a quick reading here and see what voltage we got in the pack. So 39.8 volts. That's not bad at all. Those are perfectly healthy voltages, so we know these are probably all good cells in here. And you can see on the side, these are the A123 systems cells. The model number is ANR. 26650M1B. Now considering these cells are already wired in 4P, what you could do is split it after one, two, three, four cells. And if you were to cut straight down here, you would have a 12 volt battery already wired together. And then if you cut over here, you'd have another 12 volt battery wired together. So really you can just make a couple of cuts and you would have individual 12 volt modules. Uh, however, I do want to retest all these cells, so I'm going to rip it apart. And most of us are using larger battery banks closer to 40 volts anyway. So the easiest way to get started on this is I want to remove one, two, three uh, Torx screws first. Again, they're all T10, which is nice, they're the same size. Uh, this PCB does appear to be coated with conformal coating, which just helps prevent moisture from causing oxidation and whatnot. Uh, but you do still want to be extremely careful where you're sticking the screwdriver and also be careful that you're not dropping the screws on the PCB as you remove them. Next, I want to remove the two bolts to secure the bus bar. Oh, there's actually four. The four bolts to secure the bus bar. And to do that, you'll need a seven millimeter socket. And then you can pull out <coughs> your copper bars and set those aside. Uh, just pull out this connector here. On the side with the black uh, holders, there are eight more screws you'll need to remove. There are two screws here, two screws here, and then there's also a screw on the edge underneath this strip. 
So I found the best way to get to these screws is just to punch down through this steel or nickel or whatever it is, like so. And then you can break them loose. So once you got the copper strip removed and you make sure you have all screws out from both sides of the holders, we're gonna go back to the gray side. Now I wanna remove this cell holder so that I can reuse it. That way I don't have to go and buy 26650 cell holders. Um, and this will come off in one piece but it does take a little bit of pulling at it. So I'm gonna start over here at the right hand side. This is actually the second battery I've done and it did take about 15 or so minutes the first time to get this gray cover off. It's starting to come on the first couple of cells on the right. But, uh, you really just have to work with it and continue applying the pressure the equally across the pack. And part of the problem too is there's very little area for your fingers to grip on. So by the time you're done taking one of these apart, your fingers will be killing you. And there we go. That wasn't bad at all. It only took a few minutes compared to the first time I did this. So on the other side of the holder, you can see where each of the screws was connected in. And then there's these long protrusions here that sit down in between the cell and kind of just grip onto these opposing side of the battery holder. So this is a perfectly good 48 cell holder that we are going to reuse as we rebuild this battery. So now there's lots of exposed metal, so you need to be even more careful than you were before. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove each of the attachments to the BMS board. I'm just gonna use a pair of dikes for that. And you can do the same on the black side of the board. Uh, you may need a smaller pair of dikes for this side because there is less clearance between the board and the holders. Now the end that's left over here, there is not enough clearance to get my dikes in there uh, because you see how close this lead is to this lead and that would be a direct short in there. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that one attached for right now. All right, so I'm gonna leave the side with a thick nickel bar uh, still attached for right now and I'll start with the next row in. Alright, so what I'm going to do is clip the bars going straight down here and you'll want to be very careful that you're not putting your dikes into the edge of the cell over here because this can short out. So you want to make sure you're only cutting the bar going across. And we'll do the same on the other side. So now because we have both sides of these disconnected and all of the BMS leads disconnected, these batteries should come out fairly easily. Alright, we'll just come back to these uh, six or eight later. So like I said, if you want to separate these into 4S for 12 volts. Now's your opportunity to do so. They are already connected together. Um, but like I said previously, I'm going to split these all apart so I can test the individual cells. So just a little bit about your A123 cell. See up here we have the negative end of the cell. This is a little bit different than what we're used to looking at on standard 18650 batteries. When I was first looking at these, I thought this was the positive end uh, because it's got your traditional washer separator um, and your small center terminal, but this is the negative end. And this is the positive end of the cell. Now when I remove this cell, there is no nickel left on this end, and there is a piece of nickel left on the positive end. The reason for that is the metal on the positive end of the cell is very, very thin, and it's very easy to puncture and make holes. Once you make holes in the cell, the cell is no good and needs to be recycled or discarded. The material on the end of the negative cell was thick enough that I was able to remove the nickel without making any holes in the cell. So here's an example of a cell where I tried to remove the nickel from the positive end. Uh, it's got a puncture in the metal. This cell is no good and is not safe to use. It needs to be thrown out. And I've got a couple like that. Here's another one. Again, not safe to use. It needs to be thrown out. Alright, so the easiest way i found to separate these is just to pull them apart into groups of two. 
And then we're just gonna use a pair of tin snips to snip the nickel going up. And then in from the other side. All right, so once again, I'm gonna use a tin snip just to cut them in half. On the negative end, you can snip them individually. Sorry, positive end, I'm still messing that up. Right. And do the same on the negative end. All right, now we got individual cells finally. So when you're removing the nickel, you have to keep in mind not to break through this heat shrink on the outer edge here because that will short out the cell. Uh, now I was removing the nickel from the negative end to begin with, but I think going forward I'm just going to cut it just like the positive end. And to do that, just snip it like so. There's a little tab left sticking up. And we're going to do the same on the positive end. Again, there's still a little tab sticking up. And then I'm just taking a hammer and very gently, again very gently, tapping down the nickel. And the reason why I'm using a hammer is because it's got a little bit more solid mass and even distribution as opposed to if you were tapping it with the pliers, you'd be tapping a very specific spot. Um, so that's why I'm using the hammer. Uh, so yeah, there's our first cell. Yeah, 47 more to go. These cells sure do look great. I'm not used to working with 26650s. Almost all of my cells are 18650s. Um, it'll be great to see what these capacity test at. So I'm going to keep going through these cells. I'm not going to sit here and do all 48 of them on camera, and then we'll come back when we're done. We do still need to talk about how to remove the cells from the two ends of the pack, because uh, those are the ones that have the heavier bus bar attached. Um, the only way I could think to do it is just to carefully pick apart the nickel using the tin snips, uh, because you can't like stick a screwdriver down in there. You're going to end up puncturing these cells, and you don't really want to damage these cells. These are pretty good cells. So as soon as you see it start to peel up from the cell like that, that's going to be when you want to stop. Uh, and I guess we'll just slowly work our way up the cell like that. Um, yeah, there, that worked. Alright, so I'm going to pick off the rest of these and we'll be back. Alright, so when you're all said and done with the tedious harvesting work, uh, this is what you'll have. 48-26-650 A123 cells. And if you remove the plastic pieces well enough, carefully enough, none of them broke and you'll be able to reuse them. Uh, I'm not going to insert that the whole way because I need to finish testing these cells. Um, but you'll see it goes back on very easily. Now, I sort of cheated a little bit. The cells you see here are actually from the first battery pack I disassembled. I purchased two of these battery packs from Battery Hookup. Uh, I disassembled one earlier last week to make sure I had the procedure down well before I did the video and also to get a test of these cells. That way I can show you what the capacities were in the cells at the time of making the video rather than having to post a follow-up later. Um, so you'll see there is two cells missing. All of, the cells, uh, all of the cells from this point to the right have been tested and these cells are still waiting to be tested over here. So far there hasn't been one single bad cell in this lot. It is definitely as listed when he guaranteed there are no dead cells, at least in the two packs that I purchased. I checked all the cells in the two packs that I purchased. So the two cells that are missing from the pack I just showed you are up here in the Opus. This is the Opus BT C3100 charger. It's designed mainly for 18650 and smaller cells, but it does fit two 26650 cells as well. You just kind of have to angle them right to make the correct contact in there. So I am charging and discharging at one amp. And it is important to remember that if you're going to use the Opus, the Opus by default charges to 4.2 volts and is designed for a 3.7 volt nominal battery. If you want to charge lithium iron phosphate, which include these A123 cells or similar lithium iron phosphate cells, uh, you'll need to open up the charger and you'll find a little tiny switch like this on the PCB. On yours, it will be set to 4.2 volts. You need to move the switch down to the 3.7 volt setting on the charger. 
These cells are rated for 3.6 volt charging. However, 3.7 volt charging does not make much of a difference. And I found it worked well for me. Um, if you're not comfortable using the 3.7 volt setting, uh, you'll have to go find another charger that will charge at 3.6 volts. I'm not familiar with any off the top of my head. Out of the cells I've capacity tested, these have all tested pretty well so far. I'd say they tested about average. They're not testing new, but they're also not testing poor either. Um, so if I just grab a couple at random, uh, this cell tested at 2371 milliamp hours. Here we have 2391 milliamp hours, 2414 milliamp hours, uh, 2420 milliamp hours. They're all about the same, either in the 23s or 24s. I don't think I saw any 25s, and there was nothing below 22 that I remember. So the spec sheet says cell capacity is nominal at 2.5 amp hours, minimum at 2.4 amp hours. So I guess you could say that these are almost new. I mean, if the minimum capacity in the spec sheet is 2.4 amp hours, and this is testing at 23, you know, I guess you could say they're almost testing new. Yeah, so these are testing pretty good now that I now that I take a look at the spec sheet here. Here you can see the life cycle graph and performance at 100% depth of discharge. You know, so if you're putting a light load in these batteries, let's say you're doing a 2.5 amp discharge. After about 1,000 cycles, you're still looking at about 95% of the nominal capacity remaining. Uh, so these cells definitely can take a lot of cycling. So yeah, if you do want to purchase these cells, there's a link in the description below. They are $54 for a 48 pack. After using the coupon code BATTERY, uh, the coupon code BATTERY will give you 10% off your order. This will be the last battery teardown video from me for a while. I do have one more testing video coming up, a battery testing video, and I have a follow-up coming up of my Megacell charger to give you a one-month feedback on that. Um, after that, I have a huge, huge project that I am planning for, and uh, I can't give too much information on that yet. It's still, it's still in the planning stages, uh, but you definitely will want to see what's going on. Uh, definitely do hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you liked this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below. Any questions or comments, leave them below as well. I do love to hear your feedback and see how everybody else is doing in the community. Other than that, thanks for watching.